This is Sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. I'm gonna shake your body. Wake your fuck ass up. That cross touch. Sway in the morning, shave four or five. Mike Muse, I know you're excited about this one. Yeah, I'm very excited. <laughs> we have someone here who, um, in my opinion, he's been, um, I, 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 I certainly hope we've inspired each other, but he's definitely inspired me over the years, mm -hmm. you know, uh, when I watched him um, early on when BET was just coming, coming, um, coming into form and we were getting all this information that we can trust you know, from people we can trust, from reliable sources, like thoroughly investigated information that if it was said, that meant it was fact, Heather B. Okay. We knew it was fact once he said it. That's right. We saw him on 60 Minutes as well, and I was like, man, he made it to 60 Minutes, contributing to 60 Minutes, the Today Show, the Dateline NBC. Man, he's done all these amazing things and has remained to be consistent. Um... He's a recipient of the NAACP Image Award, as he should be. He's been a pillar in our community, just a liaison of information, Heather B., mm -hmm. bridging us with the president, whether it's um, a Bush president, um, bridging us with some of the icons, whether it's Tupac or O.J. Simpson, even. He's touched down with them all, and he continues this legacy of tremendous work in a time where people like him are like unicorns. They no longer exist. Mm. Investigative reporting, yeah. broadcasting, journalism. It's a rare thing nowadays. Have to be it's a leprechaun in the room. Tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> and it gives me great pride to have him on the show because when I watch his work, it, it keeps me inspired and encouraged to do the right work. Mm -hmm. You know, not to sell out. We had a caller here that said lies are more entertaining than the truth. And that seemed to be what's been uh, plaguing our industry, I know in the music at least, and now in hard news as well, when we look at these presidential candidates, uh, talk about their character and lie about things they either said or didn't say, do or didn't do, mm -hmm. you know, and still they're appealing to a, a mass part of our population. You wonder what is the truth and what is lies. That's why we need guys like him to have shows on air, especially now that he's partnered up with Bounce TV, the one and only Ed Gordon is here. Oh, man. Ed Gordon is here. Man. 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 Ed Gordon man. is here. Good Look, I have been called a lot of things, but a um, unicorn and a leprechaun. Unicorn. Yeah, man. 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 I, I done made it now, y'all. Yeah. I done made it now. <laughs> yeah, man. We don't, it's rare we see you, man. How you doing, man? I'm good, man. Yeah. I'm last good. Last time we saw each other, if I'm not mistaken, we were in Miami. I think it was ABFF. At yeah. BFF, yeah, yeah, of, yeah. Uh, um, uh, the, the African American, American Black, Black Film, Film Festival. Festival. Yeah, and, I was, and I saw Ed Gordon, and I was with Kelly, and I was like, yo, listen, we were on our exit game. <laughs> I said, there go Ed Gordon. I got to go over there and say something, man. Mm -hmm. I'm saying something to Ed Gordon before we leave the building. That's we real. got a chance to connect. And now we're here to talk about your new show, man. Hey, let me let me just stop yes. before we get to that Absolutely. and say this. And and hello to all of you. Hi, yeah, good morning. Um, yeah, I was just telling Sway as we walked in here. I, I knew him when he was the little puppy. <laughs> the little puppy. Yeah. But w what I want to say to him is I'm, I'm proud that you were still around. And I mean Thank that you. with all due respect. This is a hard game to stay in. Yeah. And to stay in as long as you have and to stay relevant, that, that really says a lot, brother. Thank so you. kudos Thank to you. Thank man. you, Ed. Thank you, man. Thank you, Ed. I I don't know what it cry, is, man. Slay. I pray. I pray. I'm about to cry. cry. Heather, I'm about to cry. Heather. <laughs> Heather, I'm about to cry. I woke Do up it. this morning and said, damn, I got a job to go to. Man. Amen. You know, That's well, good. it's it's hard. And I want to ask you too, because journalism the, it, it's not the same creature it was no, you know, it's not. 15, 20 years ago, 10, 5 years ago. Five years ago, yeah. You know, and you got people like yourself who are highly educated, decorated, uh, been in the trenches, uh, seen it all on every level as well, but it's not even easy for you, I would suppose. Um, uh, how have you adjusted or has it been easy for you? No, man. It's it, You know, Steve Harvey said to me once, uh, becoming famous is mm -hmm. easy, staying famous is hard right and he gave the analogy that if if you told a dude to do a hundred push-ups most couldn't uh and if by the grace of god you got to a hundred that's getting famous but staying famous is when they say okay lock your arms and stay right there mm -hmm. after a hundred and Ooh. so it's just been a fight man uh -huh. it's just been a fight and kind of reforming and and reinventing yourself 
uh, without without losing yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so that's what I've tried to do. I mean, uh-huh. the, the people always say, oh, we're so proud of you. You know, you're repping the community, and I take that very seriously. Uh-huh. Uh, but I also, man, realize that at the end of the day, uh, it's about figuring out how you do what you do best, yeah. mm-hmm. and not letting somebody else shaping you. Because all uh, you know, everybody's got a better way. Yeah, you know, everybody's telling Colin Kaepernick uh, how to protest, yet none of them are protesting. Yeah, right. well, shut the hell up then. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, if, if, if you're not gonna sit or stand, mm-hmm. then be quiet. Then be quiet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and so I always tell people who are getting in the game. Figure out who you are, learn your craft, and do your thing. And do your thing. How have you adjusted? Like when when I was, um, when I was coming up, you know, we as a journalist, um, we didn't put as much of journalism wasn't all a hundred percent our opinion, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> or our slant. You yeah. know, it was reporting the facts, challenging, you know, the interviewee, right? You know, um. And trying to get as much information. That's how I learn as much information as possible for the viewer, right. listener, or, or otherwise can be informed. Now it's different. Different game. It's just about you, your brand, what you have <laughs> to say, regardless of what the. Have you have you noticed that at all? Uh, it's absolutely. You can't help but notice it. Yeah. Now you know. I would. I had this discussion yesterday, and I tell everybody. You know, it's 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 just a different generation. I'm not saying it's better or worse, but mm-hmm. I, I I grew up believing that you weren't the story. Yeah. That you there to tell the story and you're not the story mm. this generation of journalists believes you've got to be the story yeah. you know, how can i get on youtube how can i trend how can i and you know but this generation that's cool i, I think you lose some of the story though uh-huh. along the way uh-huh. but uh i'm not here to knock this generation not at all I, i'm no, just no, here no. to uh, some of them know yeah some, some of them, of them are whack, not. man. You know, I mean, let's, they're, they're, let's be honest. They're, they're, they're I mean, some of them. Yeah. Uh, and, and then, but they were whack ones 10, true, 15, 20 true. years ago. But here's the difference. Yeah. Uh, we call journalists journalists today who aren't. Okay. You know, they mm-hmm. weren't trained in journalism. They right. just got a show. They just got, you know, a, a, a microphone in front of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so there's a difference. I say if you want to be a talk show host, that's one thing. Yeah. If you want to be a blogger, that's one thing. But you're not a journalist. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So don't call yourself one. And nor we, should we expect them to be a journalist. Okay. So, you know, it's definition. definition. Life is definition. Ed Gordon is here. Mr. Gordon, how do you feel about all of these outlets that are being sued by celebrities? We've seen Gawker and Hulk Hogan and how that was a major payout for him. Uh, Melania Trump, recently Britney Spears of In Touch Weekly. Are celebrities just flexing a little bit too hard because now they have social media at their hands and maybe they're just too insensitive? Or is this a case where the media really is running a little too wild? I'm trying to get somebody to lie on me. I need some cash. (laughs) (laughs) But this is what I believe. I I believe celebrity in our country has gone crazy. Mm -hmm. And Mm. celebrities have always wanted it both ways. So you can't stay on Twitter and show every little thing that you do. And then when somebody else, albeit a lie, kind of creeps into your space, uh, you can't say, say and demand privacy. Now, I don't mean the Hulk Hogan situation in the sense of it's your bedroom and, you know, the chick was doing whatever the hell she was doing in that whole nine. <laughs> she was giving them head, <laughs> Ed. Okay, well. <laughs> I'm just, just to be clear. Thank you. Okay, no problem. I appreciate that. that. No problem, facts, man. My right? Appreciate that. I did my investigation. Way too early in the morning. <laughs> no, okay. But um, so, uh, you know, I think it's an environment that we found ourselves in. It's a cesspool to a great degree. I mean, as great as social media is um, for some things, it has turned our lives around. And so uh, I do believe that celebrities, to a degree, have um, the right of privacy. Mm -hmm. Uh, What that fine line is, I don't know, particularly as you put yourself out there. Somebody like Kim Kardashian, it's hard to say you have the right of privacy when you're putting almost everything you do out there. But, you know, needless to say, there are some of those lines. So it's a it's a it's a double edged sword, I think. True. Speaking of double edged sword, Sway started the conversation by saying, you know, lies are more entertaining than the truth mm-hmm. in some cases. But then you look at a guy like Brian Williams, you know, a reporter. <laughs> he got caught in a big ass lie. And it's like as a as a respected, educated journalist, you see him and you look at the profile that he had. Right. How do you 
deal with stuff like so, that. So I think what Brian d- did with, is a fine line. I think most journalists from way back kind of embellish a little bit along the way. Okay. You know, if it's 80 mile an hour wind, you might make it 85 mile an hour wind. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But it's never, uh, oh, not never, it shouldn't be an outright lie. Got you. So you shouldn't say, I was down and getting shot at when you were in the hotel room. Right. right. That's the difference. Now, if you say, Bullets flew over my head, and they shot at me ten times, and it was nine times. I'm good with that. Okay. Yeah, okay. You sell it. But, yeah, mm-hmm. be- because I don't care what we say. News has always been entertainment, mm-hmm. and so that's part of it. Right. Uh, but when you, you know, sitting back watching TMZ and, you know, drinking some coffee, and you talk <laughs> about you out on the front lines, that's a whole oh, nother okay. story. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where he crossed. Okay. Okay. Uh, and, and I think he just got so deep into it, he couldn't get out of it. He couldn't get out of it. Ed Gordon is here, man. He got a new show premiering uh, September 13th, Tuesday, 10 p.m. on Bounce TV. Uh, we're going to talk more about that. Um, up next, you want to speak with him, 888-742-3345. The all-new Bounce TV original series, Ed Gordon, premieres Tuesday, September 13th, 10, 9 central. Only on Bounce TV, our way. You know what? And I'll be watching this. 10 p.m. Tuesday, September 13th. With, Sell it, brother. Sell with, it. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> on Bounce TV. Uh, look up your local listings so you can find out Bounce TV, where it is, and your area. Uh, this is These are important dialogues, conversations that, that need to be had. And um, and there's something to be said about these type of interviews. Uh, they almost, they're almost like a lost art form, you mm-hmm. know, because we're living in this quick fix uh, yeah. society where people just want a headline but don't want the story behind the story. You, you know what I'm most proud of for the premiere show? I think the lineup is is amazing in the mm-hmm. sense of we've got the mothers of the movement, five of them, mm-hmm. uh, including Trayvon Martin's mother, yes. uh, Mike Brown's mother, Oscar uh, Grant, Oscar Grant yes. uh, Jordan Davis, and, and uh, Robbie Tolan, who did not die. Uh, but whose family fought to get a Supreme Court uh, uh, ruling uh, that has changed how police uh, can can use the uh, story of the victims. And so mm-hmm. it, it's an important case. But I will tell you that it's, it's a hard segment to watch. Um, it's riveting emotionally. Yeah. They really opened up. I, I really sat with them before we got started, and I, I asked them to trust me. And uh, it— it's one of those times, I think, that TV does what TV is supposed to do. Mm-hmm. And so you will walk away. It's going to be hard not to, literally, and I'm not, th- this is not a sell. This is the truth. It's going to be hard not to be caught up in this emotionally. Yeah. Um, and, and those of you who've seen the promo, you see um, Oscar Grant's mother saying, you know, he shouldn't have been killed. Mm. Many of these mothers still hold guilt because they felt like I failed my child, uh, which, which obviously isn't the case, but they uh. can't shake that grief. Uh, then we sit down with Maxwell. Yeah, uh, you know Maxwell. It, 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 yeah, that's I, that's what, what I'm curious. He's a, he, his activism. You guys talk yeah, about his man. activism. Uh, you know, you, you, I'm sure you know Maxwell. <laughs> Good brother. Yeah. Um, he is now finding the idea. He he talks about Harry Belafonte. The idea that his platform is more than just being a musician, mm-hmm. and that he can shape and change things with his with his platform. Uh, but you know, we talk about his music. We talk about his life. And you know, ladies, you can just watch him. Whatever you want to do, want to do, man, <laughs> or fellas, yeah, for that matter. Yeah, yeah, for fellas, for that matter. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, of course, we we talk with Nate Parker and all of the buzz around um, what's going on. And and one of the things I want people to do is. We talked to a a rape survivor yesterday uh, that we're going to put in the piece, and she talked about how she is going to divorce her questions about what happened that night with Nate Mm -hmm. uh, because she feels that the movie is important. And so she doesn't want to miss the movie and the message and the need for the movie Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and align that with what she may or may not think about Nate Parker because I think Gabrielle Union's um, piece in the, the New York Times, the op-ed piece, really speaks to it. None of us know what happened in that room. And so you've got to make some personal decisions. Yeah. But I've seen the movie, and I hope uh, that in some way, shape, or form, people are going to be able to to see the movie. Birth um, of a Nation. The Birth of a Nation, because it's, it's really an important piece in terms of making sure that our stories get told mm-hmm. historically. You know, most of us heard about in that uh, term, but they didn't know, you know. Right. what that was about. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we just hope to keep telling those kinds of stories with this mm-hmm. program. You know, one of the things I want to do for one of the next uh, 
series episodes coming up is I want to do a story on am I black enough for you mm. and what constitutes being black. Mm-hmm. You know, we still got that color thing. If you're light, uh, you don't suffer enough. You don't whatever. Yeah. Right. Uh, you know, is it is it? And if that's the case, is is Clarence Thomas blacker than Farrakhan? Uh-huh. Really? Okay. Let's 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 mm-hmm. deal with that. You know, there's that blackish blackish issue. You know, once you reach a certain status, are you no longer black anymore? You know, yeah. and and we don't like to necessarily admit the. The, the, the issues that we still have with it, but it's it's real. So mm-hmm. I'm looking at doing stories that we talk about, uh, backyard barbecues and right. why you're playing bid whisk and all of that, but mm-hmm. you don't see it on television. So that's what I'm looking to do. Wow, right. that sounds like a great show. It's called Ed Gordon? As, I, listen, as big as my ego is, I didn't pick that. And when, <laughs> when the bounce people said, we're going to call it Ed Gordon, I was like, not the Ed Gordon show. No. Not that. They were like, no, we just we did some research. People, people trust your name. We yeah. just gonna call it Ed Gordon. Ed Gordon. I was like, okay, cool. That's dope. Every Tuesday at ten p.m. <laughs> yeah, and throughout your entire career, you've interviewed such a mixed bag of guests about public affairs. So I'm curious, like, out of all the celebrities, whether it's um, a musician or an actress, who had the most profound thoughts on social issues? Mandela. Mm. I mean, there's no when people ask me, you know, it, it, a lot of people think it's O.J. or, you know, Michael Jackson or R. Kelly or Tupac. Mm-hmm. You know, those are those are the ones that stayed with people for so long. But for me, without question, I don't even have to think about it. When I met Mr. Mandela uh, the first time, I've interviewed him five or six times and flew over to South Africa to cover the funeral. Did he just start on Yeah, I almost missed it. Five or six ways. Five or six, okay. <laughs> no, your, your life is your life, bro. <laughs> no, but but uh, And I'm not, listen... I'm not one of those dudes who's, you know, the secret and, oh, this is mystic. And I'm from Detroit. I'm really regular. (laughs) Yeah. My mother mother used to say too regular. Mm -hmm. You know, and everybody, let me just say this too. Everybody thinks I'm a certain dude. Hmm. You know, I get way more reverence than I deserve. I was two boats away from class clown in high school. Wow. I got a buddy who will not watch me. He's, I don't know who that Negro is. And he does not use the word Negro. But, but you know, hey, yeah. whatever works. It's, yeah. You know, it's the brand. And I tell yeah. people, well, if I was a real me, they wouldn't let me in the White House. Mm-hmm. Mm. And so the, the brand of Ed Gordon has brought a certain respect that black journalists aren't often given. Mm-hmm. And so with that brand... I try to demand the respect that we aren't given yes. by virtue of my work. And so when I met Mr. Mandela the first time, I was like, this man is different. Mm-hmm. He's different than the rest of us, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, he's just an extraordinary, extraordinary person. Wow. Ed Gordon is here. Mike, you got a question for him? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, one, glad to have your voice back on television Thank the way you, that man. it is. It's such a needed voice. Uh, so I'm glad to have you back. With that, the conversation has been in terms of the Black Lives Matter movement um, and the fact there hasn't been a clear leader, if you will. Um, that's been a lot of the backlash. The reason why we haven't progressed the way we have because leadership hasn't been there. But I will go even further. And the question I have for you with that is, do you think that the reason why we haven't advanced as a culture and the reason why the narrative hasn't changed as a nation is because we haven't had moderators like you on air, on television, to moderate the conversation of race in order to pass us past those barriers within that space? I don't know. I think that's some of it. I mean, I think, listen, I, I, I see myself solely as a journalist versus an advocate journalist like Roland or, or Tavis. Um, I think those voices are out there to a degree, not in large numbers. Um, but I think our issue has been focus, you know, across the board. Uh, you know, back in the day, whether you were rich, poor or otherwise, there was segregation. And so we rallied around that there was a singular issue that we all mm-hmm. felt and we all dealt with. And even though prejudice and, 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 and questionable tactics in America uh, are, are still the truth for us, um, there are certain people who don't necessarily live that on a day to day. You know, if you are a certain status economically, if you are um, in a position that allows you not to be on a day to day in the hood, um, you don't you don't suffer with that on a day to day basis. And so I think we have to get back to unifying as one. Uh So Oprah and Beyonce are the same person as the sister in the hood in a way. You know, and there shouldn't be that separation. We should all know that we are only as good as, you know, the least among us. And I know that's cliche, but that's the truth of the matter. You know, and at the end of the day, I'm 56 years old. If I put a hoodie on right now and go outside, 
I'm in danger, whether we want to believe that or not. Mm -hmm. And if and if I act like the real me, I'm really in danger. Yeah, the, you know, because that's a different dude. Yeah. And so when you start to realize that, think about Chicago. We are getting used to 15, 20 people getting shot and 13 of those 20 getting killed in a weekend. Yeah. And we're good with that to a degree. Mm -hmm. Black America, it, we got to wake up. Yeah. That's not a bunch of white folk or Asian folk or Latina folk getting shot. That's black people for the most part getting shot in black communities. And we got a demand of a city, please. Let that happen on the Miracle Mile in yeah. Chicago mm -hmm. and see how quick that stops. Let it happen in Gold Coast in mm -hmm. Chicago and see how quick that stops. Take it to a suburb, same numbers. You're going to tell me that that would continue week after week after week? Of course it wouldn't. And we sit here like, damn, that's messed up. Mm -hmm. And that's all we do. It's time to wake up. Time and so, up. you know, if, if it's if it's voices we need, but it's also action we need, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't act like I don't ro romanticize the 60s and the civil rights movement. Most people were at home. Most people weren't marching. You know, most people were like, oh, Lord, there they go. There they... So I tell people all the time, <laughs> if you have a meeting and 10 people show up and you thought 100, that's your 10. Right. Get to work. And most of us are not getting to work. Other than liking it, we say this all the time, liking it on Facebook or complaining about it in the kitchen. Oh, that's messed up. Them da, 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 da. Well, okay, what are you doing? Just like I said with Kaepernick. Yeah. You cannot be hypocritical and say America stands for the ability to protest. And then when somebody protests, you say they shouldn't. Mm. You don't have to agree with the protest. Right. But you can't say that they can't or shouldn't or they're unpatriotic because they do. Mm -hmm. So, again, it's time for all of us to wake up because we're all a stone's throw away from being poor or getting killed. Yeah. Getting dogged at work. All of those things. All of those things. And if we don't believe it, just watch because it comes your way eventually. Mm -hmm. It comes your way eventually, and, and the, the and the prayer is that it doesn't consistently come your way, and that you know we live through whatever angst you may have when you're trying to hang on to that job, or just trying to, in the case of the mothers of the movement, stay alive. Mm. I, I mean, how many more black folk have to be killed? And I, and I am one of those people. You know, people say, "Are you taking the focus?" I'm no, I'm not. I am one of those people to say, as much as we march for these police shootings, and that's justified, more black boys and young men will be killed by black boys and young men than any police officers will kill us. Mm -hmm. And when I hear people say, well, no, man, it, ain't the same. it is the same. Dead is dead. Dead is dead. And yeah. so we've got to get to that. Got to get to that. Ed Gordon, ladies Woo! and gentlemen. Tuesday, September 13th. Ed Gordon Show is on Bounce. It ain't called the Ed Gordon Show. It's just called Ed Gordon <laughs> yeah. on Bounce TV. Uh, I got to play this clip because September 13th also is the 20th anniversary of the uh, untimely demise of a friend of mine, Tupac Shakur. And you had an opportunity uh, to sit down and talk with Tupac. Got to know Tupac over got, the years. Got to know him um, really well. Yeah. I, I mean, if you want to play the clip, I'll share it with you. Bong. Let me put this to you. A lot of people tell me. Tupac is, for the most part, a nice guy. This old thug thing, hype. Mm -hmm. Good for record sales. Mm -hmm. uh, helps him identify with the young people who are out there and angry. What about that? First of all, nobody could call me a sellout. I'm not, I'm not going for that. I'm not even in that. I'm not, I'm not looking for approval from the black community because we don't give approval. You know, we don't really do nothing but exist. So it's not like I'm, black people could tell me, you a sellout or you true blue. You know what I'm saying? It's not that. I'm not even caught up in that. So he was questioned about that a lot? He, listen, think about this. Think about what he just said. That was 20 years ago, thereabouts. <laughs> We're still dealing with the same thing. <laughs> yeah. we, we, he, we, I, God willing, had he, had he lived, I could have asked him the same thing today, and it would have been the same issues. Yeah, I mean, listen. I don't believe that, and, and I've said that to him, it, 
after that interview, he said to me, Ed, would you mind if I call you from time to time? He said, you know, you're, you're a little older than me. And, you know, he said, I think you get it. And, and, and I wasn't raised by a father. I haven't had a lot of older men in my life to help guide me. And his mom, God rest her soul, um, told the story of how he would, you know, sometimes tell her, oh, Ed is cool. Da, da, da. And he called me from time to time. And a week before he died, I said to him, I said, man, you know, and, and I believe this. I said, you ain't a thug at heart. I said, I know thugs. You ain't a thug at heart. I said, but you running around with some thugs. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, when you're not a thug at heart, you can't play thug with real thugs. Mm -hmm. He said, yeah, yeah, all right, Ed, you're right, you're right. I'm, I'm going to clean up my act. I'm going to clean up my act. And I told him, you better watch hanging with Suge. A mm -hmm. couple weeks later, he's yeah. gone. You know, and, and so at some level, I think, again, this whole sense of gangster mentality we've been dealing with, with 20, for 20 years and all of the things that are almost a psychosis with us, yeah. with black folk. We're so afraid to call it out because then there's that sense of people saying, oh, you ain't down, you don't understand. Well, what the hell with you? Yeah. You know, I would not be one of them dudes in the hood if no snitch rule. You breaking into my crib? Yeah, yeah I'd be like that Negro down. right there, <laughs> third <laughs> house <laughs> off the corner. I ain't got nothing to do. I need my <laughs> laptop. I go in there. <laughs> <laughs> That's not me, Doc. Nah, not me. Uh, nah. No, but he was a he was a good brother. Yeah. Misguided at times because, and he knew it. He knew it. He did not have <laughs> someone to kind of help guide. We all need that. Mm -hmm. I'm 56. I have a mentor to this day. I call right. and say before I make a big decision, should I? Should I do this? What's your thinking on this? Mm -hmm. And so I'm just sorry that he didn't find um, the ability to to make it through. Yeah. You know, I, I often wonder what would he be today? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, just a good brother. Man. 20 years later. Ed Gordon, man. Ed Gordon, lady. Ed Woo! Gordon. <laughs> Ed Gordon. Ed, how, what's your social media, man? I want the citizens to uh, be able to reach you directly. Yeah. You got a lot of call. Uh, let me, Chuck from Iowa. Juan from Texas, Fred from North Carolina, G from California. The phone lines are lit up. Come on, man. Hey, let's talk to him. You want to talk to him real quick? Hold up, man. man. Can't can't we... the... Yeah, yeah, man. Look, let me go. Let me look, go. I'm trying to stay on, man. Okay, okay. Hold Hell, y'all woke me up this morning. I'm supposed to be Edna, so I might as well. Man. Okay. Hey, G, what up, G? Say what up to Ed Gordon. Hey. Go. Good morning, Ed. Hey, uh, man. Ed Gordon, uh, morning crew. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Tracy, Tracy G kind of jacked my, my uh, question, so... I just want to, to uh, congratulate you and say uh, keep up the good work. You know, I've been rocking with you for a long time, and I'm going to continue to rock with you. And I appreciate what you're doing, brother. Thank you, brother. I appreciate uh, that. Hey, uh, but one, one thing right quick to Sway and the morning crew. Yeah. Uh, hello? Yes. Yeah. Am I on? Yes. Still? Yes. Okay. <laughs> hey, Sway, I, I, I really love what you guys do as well, um, but I'm going to keep it 100 with you, man. Uh, you can have a topic like, the Kaepernick thing, and then you'll come with something like uh, somebody stole my work, my, my lunch at work. And that'll be like your morning thing for the callers to call in on. Like, come on, brother. You, you, you got, you, you got, you way deeper than that. I understand sometimes to, to, to get the laugh and have the fun with it, but it seems like it's starting to go more and more towards that direction. Let's get some of them good issues in there as well, bro. Hey, G, you just said we could have a topic like Kaepernick and his right to either stand or sit um, during a national anthem. And then right. somebody may have really, I don't recall somebody stealing my lunch money at work being the topic. But what, well, I, no, share I, with, what, what, what I share with you, G, is what goes on in my everyday life. Like what really happens when I have somebody working in my apartment building. Um, and they're dropping heavy equipment on my rooftop, and I'm scared that the it might form a it might forge a hole in my rooftop. That's what happens in my everyday life. So, let, let me just share yeah. this though, and and here's a reality that we have to get to. So, and thank you, brother, for the call and the support. One of the things as a community we need to get to is if you really want the Kaepernick piece. Uh, to be the majority of the show, then we need to support that because Sway has to make sure the ratings stay the same. I have to do the same. It's a fight for us to even get 
quite frankly, social issues, important issues mm-hmm. on because they're always pushing back on our community. Oh, no, y'all like laughing. Y'all like laughing. We've done the research. That are... So my thing is, if he does a serious date, and all y'all should be listening, so he can go into the bosses and say, well, here's the deal. This is why I want to do this, because the numbers show that. Because the truth of the matter is, we say we hate Ratchet TV, but we watch it. Mm-hmm. And we watch it in big numbers. Mm-hmm. And I tell people all the time, it's not just teenagers watching that. I know 40 and 50 year old women who laugh and say, well, yeah, I do. I do watch them, 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 mm-hmm. them uh, well, housewives. OK, now when your daughter's on a poll because you and your daughter was watching it, don't call me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't call me. And, and, you know, and, and then we'll talk about that, too, on our show. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, I mean, you know, the balance is cool. Uh, but I always say if you want something different, I can't tell you how many people come up to me and say, yeah, we need you back on TV. Well, OK, so we're going to see September 13th. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, you know. come come out and support. But 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 gee, that to Ed's point, it's it's a balance, man. So I, I don't talk about right. uh, politics all day, every day, because it'll drive me crazy. And this is Eminem's radio station, so it's a music based um, morning show that's able wow. to to able to talk into politics and social issues and everyday life, right. and and that's what this show is all about. But I appreciate you sticking on with the topic hey. you do like, brother. Real quick. Real quick, real quick. That's real it, quick. LG. That's it, G. I got to go to the next one, man. All right. We got uh, Fred from North Carolina. You don't get a real quick. <laughs> Ed, he don't get a real no. quick. Nah, man. Hey, Fred, what up? Yes, sir. Good morning, crew. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Good, Great. good. Ed, uh, Mr. Gordon, I wanted to say one thing. Uh, I remember you having your show on BT a few years, well, several years back. I think you had Kevin Powell and Suge Knight and yeah, someone else. Man. And Suge Knight kind of made yeah. a sly comment. <laughs> and I would say something. You you straight, like, G-checked him. And yes, I, I, I really did, doctor. What'd he say? And, Look, and, man. And I knew then you weren't, you weren't any type of joke. No, or, doc. Like, I, I, that was Detroit coming straight out. Let me tell y'all what happened. <laughs> Suge, Kevin Powell, we had a, a, a Tupac forum. Uh-huh. And Suge was an hour late. Now, I, I, I'm very punctual. Yeah, And I I get traffic can be bad and all of that. I give people 10, 15 minutes. If you're a superstar, I'll even give you a half an hour. Mm-hmm. But after that, I'm done with you, right? So 15 minutes went by, 20 minutes, no sugar. So I'm like, we can start the show. And the other guests were like, no, no, we'll wait, we'll wait. 45 minutes. So Suge walks in and doesn't say, I'm sorry. He walks in with a big entourage, blah, 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 blah. So he sits down and I said, he didn't say anything. So I said, really, dude? Really? You're not going to say, hey, sorry, F y'all, something. Yeah. You got to say something, something. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. no, no, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. So then he got started and he co- goes in on Kevin Powell. And, I mean, he's leaping on Kevin and just, you know, you didn't know. Da, da, da. So I'm like, hey, Doc, I'm not sure what shows you used to. And I'm not sure if you think you're running this show. Mm-hmm. But you ain't running this show tonight. You don't treat my guests that way. Mm-hmm. And, you know, by the time we were through, I checked him a couple times. And my producer, Carol, she's like, Eddie, she calls me. And she's like, Eddie, stop that shit. Said, <laughs> so while she's talking to me in a commercial break, I can hear her. He's sitting to my right. And I'm like, skip that dude. Sugar ain't nobody. Now I'm figuring. <laughs> I'm figuring the cameras on. He can't shoot me with the cameras yeah, on, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He can't shoot me with the cameras on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But by then I was so mad. I was like, skip him. Yeah. You know. Da, da, da. So after the show, he said, "Man, I, I said, look, dude, you was on Don Imus that morning, right? Mm-hmm. I said you made it to his show on time, but the brother's show you couldn't make it on time." Mm-hmm. I got an issue with that. And, oh, yeah, look, man, here's my number. Here's my number. Take it. This is my cell. I said, all right, man, call it right now if you don't believe it. I said, no, because if you gave me the wrong number, I'm done with you, period. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm done with you, period. So, you know, my thing is I, I just feel we all need to be respectful of one another. Yeah. You don't even have to like me. Just mm-hmm. respect me. Mm-hmm. You can call me whatever you want to do. You know, just do it in a nice way. Yeah, yeah <laughs> you know. Yeah. So that's what it is. Thank you, brother. I appreciate and, that. Glad and, and you remember and, that too, man. Hey, thank, thank, thanks for your call. All right, let's go to um, one more um, Iowa. We got Chuck, and I. I love taking callers from Iowa. Chuck, what up, man? <laughs> hey, Chuck. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Doing great. How you doing, doing great, man. Go ahead, man. Say hello to Ed Gordon. Martin family. Hey, uh, Mr. Gordon. There's an how honor you doing, brother? You, sir? Um, I I wanted to know. You know, through the years and all, all your stories that you've done, um, what story ha- had kept you up or had woken you up in the middle of the night and, and be it good or bad, you know, for whatever reason and and why? You know, I'm going to be honest, all of them do. Like, even doing this show, I, my wife will tell you, I get up and I'm like, oh, man, I, you know, do I go this way? Do I go that way? Because mm-hmm. I'm very passionate about what I put on. 
Uh, I want it to be good. Um, but I will tell you, years ago, I did a story in Detroit. And again, it shows where our community is. Um, there was a woman, Clementine Barfield, and two of her boys had been killed because of street violence. And she did a group called Save Our Sons and Daughters, So Sad. And I remember doing that story um, and being just infinitely sad because she had lost two kids and I was sitting across from her and she's telling the story and, the, and then you know I do the story with the mothers of the movement and and they've lost their children and so when you do this job you get a little peek into everybody's life yeah. and you realize um, what that's about um, every story has something that excites you should have something that excites you or keeps you up I remember the first time I met the wonderful singer Nancy Wilson, I, I had a crush on Nancy Wilson from the time I was a little, and young people won't know who she is necessarily, but my parents used to have her albums, and I remember looking at an album, I was probably about eight, thinking, man, this, I, my mama's friends don't look like this lady. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, that was the first time I can remember really getting excited, man, you know. So, I, I mean, I think if you have a passion for what you do, you find an excitement yeah. no matter what. So that's what I've, I've tried to do. Hey, thanks for your call, Chuck. You're a citizen. It's way in the morning. All right. Uh, man, Ed, I want to thank you for coming by this morning. Man, it's been such a treat. Thank you, yeah. brother. Yeah. Hey, can I say a... before I leave, just a, a shout out to my wife who loves your show, man. She's oh, really? listening oh, right absolutely, now. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, Deirdre Lucas, uh, just all my people. I was like, y'all be listening to Sway? What the hell? <laughs> and then they were like, we citizens. And I'm like, whatever, <laughs> man. Whatever. So shout out to them. Man. I'm going to tell your wife she is absolutely a yeah. supreme citizen. All it's right, all right. And the whole team. Ed Gordon, man, Bounce TV, Tuesdays, 10 p.m. Make sure you watch his show. This is journalism at its finest. Thank you. All, all right. Man. Thank you. We got, all right. Uh, we got um, Brooke Zill coming by. Prince Paul's new group. It's a collaborative effort with um, um, uh, some guys and sounds from Brazil and Brooklyn. Yeah. They all came together. I did a collabo with them. Man. Did you really? No, but it sounded good. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Featuring Ed Gordon. It's Sway in the Morning. Only on Shade 45.